Hello and welcome to the Modernising Construction podcast by Midgroup. Uh, I'm Jeremy Brim. I'm going to be interviewing some of our people in Midgroup uh, and other leading lights from the industry about some key topics and key projects uh, that are driving forward the modernising uh, of our great discipline and, and uh, sector. Uh, so first of all, uh, we've got a fantastic episode to kick off uh, today, uh, kick off the programme today. I'm going to be talking to one of our project directors, Graham Turner, uh, about the black and white building uh, a fully timber building in Shoreditch in London uh, that's just topped out. It's currently in construction, uh, a net zero fully timber building and some of the whys and wherefores or challenges uh, of constructing that thing. So let's get into it. Let's talk to Graham. Hi, Graham. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. Very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, chat. Not too bad. Good to see you. So uh, I've been excited about this one. We've meant to have this one recording in the diary for a while, haven't we? Uh, yeah. So one of the probably the, the one of the most interesting construction projects I've I've seen for a while. But before we get on to that, we better do introductions, I guess. So Graham, would you would you mind just uh, telling us a bit about yourself in the first instance? Yeah, I'll be make it a bit brief because it's been a long career. Um, my name is Graham Turner. Um, I started in this industry in the mid 70s, um, which points you at my age a bit, I suppose. Um, I started as an apprentice plumber, so completed my plumbing apprenticeship and decided I wanted to get into uh, site management. So upon completing my I, um, uh, my apprenticeship, it was basically penning the page of a few contractors. Um, and got into site management and have been there since. Worked for a number of contractors over the years. Some of the larger ones like um, uh, your Skanskers and your Lendlease and developers like uh, St George who are part of Barclay Homes, um, right through to some fit out contractors, um, a, a broad range really. Um, I've worked on, on contracts uh, from major civil engineering contracts to housing contracts, to fit out contracts, uh, even some even some district heating. So yeah, it's been a, a very varied, a very varied career. Very good, <laughs> like, pretty varied. Um, so yeah, the, the the sort of heart of the conversations today today is about our black and white building project yeah. uh, mid group. Uh, or did, did we did we hear they're renaming the project? What, what was the they're talking about as, so it's, as it's a building made entirely of timber. Someone's dreamt up the name Woodhouse. Of course, excellent. Must have been a marketeer. But um, yeah, I'm sure if people Google it, they'll they'll find black and white building first at the moment. Yeah. I would. So um, give us a bit of a history background to the project first of all. That's right. Um, it appeared in our office about three years ago, um, ish, I would think, um, and we started looking at it. And I think we were about one of about uh, five contractors that started looking at looking at the project. Um, of course, it's uh, a project <clears throat> by its very nature. It's a project that um, nobody would have done before, for not for many years. This type of entirely timber and timber building. Um, and we were one of five, and then we got down to one of two contractors. And when it actually got to down to choosing, the client went with the other contractor um, through, and they did a, a PCSA period. Um, by the end of the PCSA period, um, the price of the chosen contractor was greater than ours, and their program was greater than ours. Um, so then the, at that point, the client had a rethink and, and got us back on board. Uh, we spent a little bit of time making sure the numbers in the program would still work with because you know, obviously the project had moved on a bit and we were up to stage four by that time. Um, so we, we took it on at that stage and um, here we are. Fantastic. So t tell us a bit about the, the project itself. So we've touched on there. It's a, it's a timber building. Yeah, it's 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 very unusual. Um, it's uh, we took down the old building that, that stood there. Um, which, funny enough, was a timber frame building. Well, it was two buildings. It was a timber frame building, um, which went back about 115 years. Um, and behind that was a, a sort of 1970s, 80s concrete and, and steel building. Um, the uh, What is quite interesting is the, the original timber frame building was actually um, uh, a timber curing shed for an old timber company. So, uh, it, and some of that timber we've actually kept and, we're, and it's going to be uh, reused 
as um, something within the building, whether it's a sculpture or a bit of furniture or whatever, um, hasn't been decided yet, but some of the old timbers have been kept. So anyway, we took we took down the old building um, and there uh, had some archaeology done, but there was nothing under it because the building never had a, had a basement. So nothing had ever been explored under the building prior to us getting there. So archaeology was done and then we uh, basically piled the uh, perimeter of the building and did a basement. So the concrete piles, um, lining wall, um, uh, waterproof concrete, slab over top. And that's it as far as concrete goes. Everything above the ground now is timber. So we've got timber walls, which are basically CLT. Uh, we've got timber columns and timber beams, which are from a company called uh, the, the Balbuka which are a little bit like blue lamb, but they're actually um, LVT, which is laminated veneer timber, um, which are haven't been used that much yet in this country. Now, okay. also, as well as timber walls, timber beams, timber columns, we've also got a timber lift shaft and uh, a timber stairwell, which is quite unusual because normally the, <clears throat> the cores in, in these buildings are, are generally concrete concrete and steel mixture thereof but we've got an entirely timber building um, there's one little bit of cross bracing but apart from that everything's been worked out so it works around the timber it's uh, it's very unusual in that i'm told it is the first all timber um office in london since the great fire of london so over wow. the 50 years ago so we can't call on any of that old team for advice on <laughs> on how they did things so yeah, so we're, we're working our way through it. There's <clears throat> lots of things that are quite innovative or, or quite new. Um, it's like a timber column passing through a timber floor. If you want to do some fire stopping, it's it's chances are that nobody has ever tested that fire stopping detail before. So a lot of forethought and thinking and looking ahead uh, as to actually how we get this thing up and get it built uh, has taken place uh, on the hoof as we go along. What were the key challenges in delivering a fully timber building? The main challenge is you're trying to build a timber building and in, in this country, invariably, it's going to rain. You can't avoid it. It will rain. So we started putting it up, <clears throat> the timber, in May this year. And we had the fourth wettest May on record. Of course you did. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> you have to accept that the buildings, that the wood will get wet. That, that's a fact, unless you put a roof over the top of the, um, over top of the whole structure, um, which funny enough, originally we did look at that, um, but it was uh, ineffective with the, with the cost, it, didn't, it was uneconomic. So you have to accept the building is going to get wet. And what you need then is a plan to get the water to run off or to allow the water to run off. So you develop a, a water management plan. Now it's, it's quite interesting because there was lessons learned as we went, as we went along with that. Um, <clears throat> Um, so if you take, you've got flat floors, obviously, um, around the perimeter of each floor is an upstand that takes the brackets for the curtain walling. So we had to look at leaving the upstands off until we got floors on the levels above so we could sweep off rainwater. So that was fine on the flat floors. When you got to the roof, um, it has built into it an, an inherent um, uh, angle across the roof, yeah, a fall across the roof. Now the water, during construction will not go the same way as it will upon completion because upon completion we've got um, we've also got tapered gutters to take it into the outlets so you have to look at you have to take a view on where's the water going to go during construction and you have to allow for temporary outlets and and, and temporary holes through parapets and um, you know various other things you have to take into interviews to make sure your, your, your water can always run off so the, t the timber can get wet it's treated as well the the CLT comes with a um, with a membrane on it, on each sheet. So as you as you lay the seal, so you then take the joints, and the bow book of beams um, and columns, um, they come with a coating on as well. But what you can't do is wrap them all in polythene because then you'll be bringing on the likes of mould and, and and that sort of stuff. So you're trying to strike a balance between um, getting wet and allowing the air to get to things to dry, and that's a, a bit of an ongoing ongoing process. Bit, bit of a I'm sure. Um, 
And then the, you mentioned the concrete in the basement. I saw where we were doing a bid the other day. Uh, we did a case study on the, the concrete in the basement because you, you made that look like a wood finish, in effect. Yeah, it's all, all, it's all part of the uh, of the effect. So um, not uh, not in the back areas, but in, in the main areas that are going to be offices and meeting rooms, we've actually put a, uh, we've used like a timber shuttering to give it like a timber riven finish. So it, it looks like it looks like timber grain. Fantastic. I'll, I'll, um, I'll put a link to the case study in, in the yeah. uh, in the piece of the, the podcast so people can click through and see some pictures because it is a visually really quite stunning office for the, for the office group. I think uh, it's, it's going to be a fantastic uh, environment for them. Were there, were, were there any other sort of key achievements in delivering the project that, that you've... Well, just, uh, I'll just go back onto that because that was quite interesting. Um, the You can buy um, a, a mould... Uh, like a rubber mould you can put on your uh, shuttering to give yourself a timber finish. Um, but the client didn't want that because it becomes a bit too regular. So mm -hmm. we actually selected and sorted and actually put individual pieces of timber on every piece of shutter, um, which can only be used twice at the most, um, to make sure that every, almost every other panel was different. Um, right. A lot of work went into, into getting that right. And of course then we... The first we we did a we, we did a mock up off site on um, of, of the timber walls and the timber floors and the timber columns, so the client could come along and we could actually we actually looked at the depth of the grain they wanted to have in the concrete and details of how penetrations went through it and how columns met ceilings and and uh, yeah. all that type of stuff. So a lot of work went into just getting the concrete right before we even started the timber. Fantastic. And who are the architects on this this project? Wolfenstein WTA. Yeah, so this is this is very much their kind of project, isn't it? They. they... It's, it's what they do. It's, it's their their bread and butter. They're, they are. I think they're the leaders in the field on on timber. Yeah, well, it's been really interesting, isn't it? You're, it appears to me that you're sort of part time project director, part time tour guide. Well, um, we've <laughs> you say that we've had over sixty tours now. That's not sixty people. That's sixty tours. Um, yeah. I've been in with. Uh, it, we've even had um, 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 the American, one of the American news channels came down and had a look and took it back to the States. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot, lot of interest. I, I had some people recently from a, um, a Japanese timber association that come over from Japan to have a look. So there is a, a lot of interest going on. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really stunning, interesting project. I'd uh, you know, get really drive people to have a look at the case study. I'll, I'll put that link uh, mm. to the study on the website well um and, and i guess that just to finish off graham what's been your proudest moment i guess with mid group or certainly uh, on, on this project well, it's, it's it's got to be this building hasn't it you know um uh, it, it's um it, the fact that we were in at the very start and, and then we you know and then we've actually built it you know um and then we had the um the topping out ceremony fairly recently um quite a lot of people at that and we did the traditional lifting a, a spruce tree up onto the roof of the building um, and uh, yeah I think that was that was that was the moment you know to actually any building you know anybody in my position they see a building on a piece of paper and they give birth to it but this one's fairly special yeah fantastic well I, I know we're going to get some coverage in some of the trade press soon actually uh, I, I need to talk to you about organizing yet another site tour or uh, <laughs> interview about that so I'm sure people will see um you know more on the project i mean timber generally we're, we're in this odd situation aren't we with kind of the building regs and hack it review all of that kind of stuff it, kind of the butting heads around the use of timber well, in buildings we've, we've, we've noticed this on on the visits we've had to site people are it, it's very diverse people are the one way or the other they're, they're there to talk about the risk of fire or they're there to talk about how green it is yeah and it's like now shall the twain till they meet you know uh, as you say, there's there's the there's the two sides at the moment that are driving. Yeah, it's really. I think it's going to get caught in the eye of the storm of that. Um, talking, we we did a, a presentation to a, a politician who remained <clears> there <throat> earlier today. Myself and our chief exec Steve Hearn, and we were talking about this very subject and, and black and white as an example. I mean, yeah, clearly it's kind of lower risk because it's an office building rather than residential, and I kind of get get the resi piece to a point but um yeah if we if we want to be net zero as black and white's net zero isn't it yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if, we, if we want to be net zero then um you know it's it's a technology we need to explore 
um, more and more. So, well, there you go. Well, thank you very much for your time, Graham. It's, it's okay. Appreciated. Uh, yeah, like I say, it's it's an interesting project. You know, one that I think the industry will really take note of. So it's great to be able to talk about it. And um, yeah, to keep to keep doing the great work till till we get to the finish line. I look forward to looking at the finished product. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks very much. Speak to you okay. again. Thank you very much. Well, what an interesting project. What a great guy. Thank you very much again, Graham, for your time. Um, you know, there's a lot of takeaways there, I think, for, for the industry and some of the whys and wherefores of uh, constructing with timber. Please do go and uh, click on the link that uh, I've put into the, the podcast description to look at some more details of that project. It's visually stunning. It's even been in D-Zine uh, magazine recently, and you'll see it in some trade press uh, in the coming weeks and months too I'm sure um, so what have we got coming up in terms of other episodes so I'm going to be talking to Stephen Chudley our head of digital and design uh, about our approach to MMC which I think uh, certainly some of our competitors but hopefully some clients and consultants uh, will find interesting and I'm going to be talking to my mate David Merrills uh, who's our area director for the southwest about a couple of things our projects uh, the Bath Road project that we have currently in Bristol uh, which I think is the, the talk of the town in terms of how we're constructing that large residential project on the banks of the river uh, in Bristol there, uh, one that many contractors had, had stumbled on before uh, we got our hands on it. Uh, but I also want to talk to Dave about the Western Gateway, uh, the equivalent of the Cambridge to Oxford Arc there uh, across the southwest of England and southern Wales. Uh, and the part we some of the things we've found uh, playing in that market uh, and some of the, the vision that we would want to see uh, for that piece of the country. Um, so I look forward uh, to catching you on future episodes. Hope you found it useful. See you soon.